like all good stories. I stole this one from someone in the past who is dead now and can't do anything about it. It's called The Bride. Er, technically, I suppose. The Fiancé. Aha! Uh -huh. You sure about that, spirit? I cannot believe I've been roped into another story. Shads? Just get my tail out. Ahem! Alright, let's settle again. <clears throat> One winter, a young couple decided the next spring they would be married. The two were madly in love and could not wait for the snow to melt so they could join in matrimony and unite their souls for eternity. Per the latest bridal trends, they decided to have their wedding ceremony at the edge of the woods by a beautiful shabby sheep farmhouse. Together, they spent months planning the details of the wedding. The two created invitations, figured out seating arrangements, and tested 100 cakes before settling on the perfect one. They chose Likoloi, by the way. So fancy. When it came time to figure out the decorations, however, the bride, er, the fiance, I guess, since she wasn't actually married yet, wanted to take the lead and set the style. After all, her boyfriend had been wearing cargo shorts and open-toed sandals for pretty much their entire relationship, so he was definitely not to be trusted. Having decided on such a lovely, natural setting for their ceremony, the fiancé decided that she would create unique floral arrangements from the local wildflowers that surrounded the farmhouse. As soon as the sun rose on the first day of spring, she set off into the woods. Each day, she spent hours mapping out where the best blooms could be found, and prepared to pick them herself the morning before the wedding, so that they'd be at the height of their freshness and beauty. Enamored with the incredible variety of flowers in the woods she surveyed, the bride, or the fiance, since they hadn't yet been married, became obsessed with knowing just how many there were, so that she could choose the absolute best. When the fateful morning of her big day finally came, the fiance told her husband to be that she had one final errand for the wedding. Excited for the ceremony to come, she dressed in her beautiful white gown and set off into the woods to gather flowers. Treading carefully, she followed her route, selecting only the best stems and collecting them in a basket. However, when she came upon a once familiar clearing, something was not as she expected. Somehow, it was more beautiful than it had ever been before. And just on the edge of her view was a new bush filled with blossoms, so vibrant and colorful. She became dizzy just looking at them. But the fiance ignored her sudden spell and pressed ahead, scooping up flower after flower. Every time she did, she noticed just further ahead, impossibly, even more beautiful blossoms. Carried by the sweet fragrance of spring air, the bride and the fiance crept farther and farther into the woods until she turned a corner, stepping over a mossy fallen tree trunk and realized she had been here before. But this wasn't the clearing she remembered. Or 
At least not how she remembered it. The flowers were suddenly overripe, decaying, falling from their stems into festering multi particles on the floor. And where bees had been, now only flies buzzed, or the scene of flowers had once intoxicated her. The odor of mildew now made her sick. She turned and looked back, but the path was dark. Into a shadowy glen she walked, and walked, and walked. That day, as guests gathered at the farmhouse, the fiancé was nowhere to be seen. Her friends, family, and love began to look for her, but to no avail. They searched the pasture, tree line, and into the forest, but there were no beautiful wildflowers or young lovers to be seen. Just old, dead trees, trampled vines, and moss-covered rocks. The fiancé stayed a fiancé for eternity, always wandering, looking for fresher blooms to clip, but never finding them. Distracted by a never-ending search for perfection, unable to see that you are loved for who you are. Out there all alone. I thought it was beautiful and sad. Just like someone we know. Ah, god damn it, these two ruining the mood again. Yeah. 